Now let's begin to speak of Virgo. Virgo as the ascendant. We can see why this is a grounded sign. First of all, because there is Tamas in the ascendant. Tamas and Artha means the one who wants to seek meanings and work routines about how to get about going about doing things in their life. Okay. So the sixth house stands for as Tamas and Artha, it stands for work and routines for self. This itself says that they are always seeking towards themselves. Don't interpret this as selfish. They are just seeking things as a soul which has come to do that this lifetime around. This is that simple. So it's seeking in the first place, the first Artha is this, going to the fifth house where there is another Rajas Artha which is the Capricorn and going to the ninth house which is Rajas Artha in the Taurus. Now note one similarity here which you'll see a pattern and which you'll see much later when we go into the planets part of it. Note that number five, fifth house from the ascendant, ninth house from the ascendant, all will have the same quality about it, the same seeking. So this is Artha, this is Artha and this is Artha. Same way it will go for all signs. Just make a mental note of it for now. <clears throat> In the second house, they have Rajas and Kama. This is the Libra, which is seeking the who, answer to the who, fulfilling the need for connection and companion. This is why Virgonians will feel very connected to their birth family and to the family that they will make later on in life. They are seeking that connection, the deep connection which Libra seeks, Rajas and Kama seeks. So they will be, because it is Rajas, they will keep on changing this energy throughout their life. It's a constantly growing thing for them in life, that area of life. Wherever Rajas appears in whichever house, for example, even 8th house or even in 10th house, uh, sorry, 5th house, Virgonians will constantly shift and change their ideas to answer the question of that particular house. In this case, in second house, they answer the who. So they feel very connected and as a companion to their birth family, to their elder siblings, because second house is for elder siblings. And they work through that energy. Okay, Even they get connected to wealth a lot. The wealth of the family which they are born in, because second house stands for wealth. Okay. Wealth of the birth family, wealth which you create and that they use to answer that question, the what, the where, how to accomplish things. They are seeking grounding, tamas and artha, the means to accomplish a task. In the third house, they have tamas and moksha, the first moksha point, the first for what question, for what am I doing all of this, finding their core desire. That's the first moksha point for the work was in it. And Funnily enough, again we have seen the connection as other ascendants I have posted before of the connection between the third house and the first house. Whatever energy they are having in the first house, somehow it ties very deeply to the third house of every ascendant. And this is how. In this case, they are asking for Artha. <clears throat> they are asking for means here. And here they are finding for what do I need those means because third house stands for abilities, communication, social media, sexual desires, beginning. It's a beginning point of all sexual desire, short travel. So they are asking all this for what am I doing that in fact? I know I want all of this, but why? For what? For what purposes? Desire. In the fourth house, which is the second of the Kendra houses, the foundational houses, they have Sattva and Dharma. Now, Sattva means the conceptual form of energies, as we've already discussed in the first one. Dharma means seeking the highest conceptual level of seeking. So the questions asked are the what, the where and the who. That means whichever house it stands for, they will ask those questions there. Here they are seeking higher meaning, philosophy and wisdom from their home front, from their heart. Ties into that, isn't it? core desire and what does it mean to me in my heart? What does my home and family mean? What does my mother mean? Because fourth house is mother, fourth house is the heart also. Okay, These are all the aspects of the fourth house. What does my homeland mean to me? And they are very grounded in that aspect. So they are seeking all the grounded meanings. It's the tamasic sign. 
in the fifth house the second artha point which they come to they are moving the energy in terms of the how what and the where career business and job and business so virgonians the virgo soul will seek to take education in whatever serves that particular part the what and the where where should i work and what routine should i carry out that's what i'm going to study that's what i'm going to get education in that's what i'm going to get job in business in and they'll get very creative about it because this is a creative sign this is a creative house in fact virgo tends to get very structural as i spoke of in the earlier videos as well virgo is the structural earth they want to create structures around it and they want to create sorry not structure they are um, creative earth so they want to get very creative about it this is where it shows up as capricorn in the house of creativity that's the groundedness that's the artha part of it but they will move these energies they will shift they might change their creative talents from time to time as they grow through life sixth house in the sixth house we have sattva and kama the purest form of their desire the purest form of desire is translated as the for what in terms of material gains gains of wealth gains of connections in life so their work they will be constantly looking for connections to people how to make network social networking will be they'll be big on that they will want to create contacts they will want to create business contacts and such and such because they want gains in terms of connections and in terms of money they are looking for a lot of money in their work daily routines in the seventh house they have tamas and moksha pisces the last moksha point the why me where the ego is being liberated okay it's embracing the liberation from ego but that's in the spouse the house of spouse love interest partnerships business partnerships so if for the virgo people it is best if they can see this earlier on in life and understand that the question the fundamental question of why me which is answered in pisces they can find from their spouse or from their love relationships or all the kind of affairs they have had if they try to examine back and front why did they have affairs with such and such a person why did they have romantic interest in so and so relationships come and go as we know in everyone's life so if they examine that they will know the why me answers very well it's right in their spouse or their love interest in eighth house it answers the question the why so the soul of the virgo in the house of secrets eighth house is the house of secrets but that has gone to the third house over here now we have aries so they need to find path purpose and direction in all the hidden things of life there are some things always hiding from the from every ascendant and in case of virgo ascendant that's the why that will answer that question the hidden secrets the hidden wealth the hidden enemies okay all that if they need to find they will understand why they have taken birth this time around in the ninth house of higher learning and philosophy they have taurus they have rajas and artha so their idea of higher philosophy and learning would be the how the recognizing the resources and abilities this is the third and the last artha point that the virgo souls graduate they start from trying to understand work and routines they move into getting creative and get jobs and everything with regard to that get an education with regard to that then they find out the means of recognizing how to get really the resources and abilities that they need to accomplish what whatever is in the 10th house rajas and kama the what discovery of skills desires and communication so the virgo souls path seems to be centered around graduating in the 10th house this is where they really discover skills desires and communications the third third house till then they are just investigating and doing all sorts of things to come to this house in this rajas and kama the what the discovery of skills and communication happens here okay now in the 11th house they have satva and moksha 
the last moksha, moksha point the second moksha point they had in the spouse the first one they had in their skill sets this is the last when they interact with social media okay this is the interaction with social media larger community gains etc that answers their question for what the connection with the heart for the virgo ascendant happens in the collective in the social media in large networks in participating and giving away their talents towards the larger good that's where they get their moksha that's where they get their liberation okay that's where they connect with the heart so for the virgo soul the highest evolution possible is connection with their own heart till now they were all grounded they were very earthly the highest connection they will make is connecting with their own heart <coughs> In the 12th house, we have Sattva and Dharma, the last spiritual point. What is the final spiritual evolution point for the Virgo? That's in the 12th house, where they ans get answers to the questions, the why and the how, using creative intelligence. What they started here, creative intelligence, in that house is actually being fulfilled in the 12th house. So when they start getting past this moksha point when they realize this if they work through all their creativity and if they connect with their heart then they will understand the why and the how then they will really start giving away their creative intelligence education whatever they have learned through all of this they will give away to the society this is the beautiful virgo ascendant